Hello folks, this is Kinky, uh, doing comparison of Advanced Wars and Conflict, uh, the summary of it. As you can see here, we're doing Advanced Wars 2, uh, showing off the what's inside the base, and the capture system of uh, using infantry to capture a building. Uh, this is very different from Conflict, where you have to have so many fame points before you can unlock different weapons, and you can only produce one unit per turn, regardless of how many factories you have. In Advanced Wars, you can produce as much as you want, as long as you have factory space and you have uh, the funds available. Uh, awesome. We'll go ahead and then show off. This is the conflicts uh, thing, as you can see here. I was playing the blue team, and I don't have as much. So I don't start with as much fame points as my opponent, who has all of his. Meaning very lopsided combat. Plus, uh, conflict has it where the bases can be destroyed, which is different from advanced wars. Advanced wars, you have to either have a unit on top of it or. Uh, capture it or it'll continue to produce. While this one you just bomb the living turd out of it and uh, then it then it's no more. It's not on the map anymore. Giving a completely unique and different gameplay. Also uh, as you'll notice my units are commandos while he's using a, a bomber. Advanced Wars this would not be possible. Consider this like a mech unit versus a bomber unit. As you can see, my mech unit fired a missile, and uh, he dropped a bomb. My missile hit, and he his bomb hit. Uh, going that shows a little bit different thing of saying that even uh, lowly poopy units can still do some damage. Uh, Versus in this one, everything is rather rigid in its combat rules. Uh, even the COs have fixed percentages, and there's rules regarding which units can engage which units. Uh, as you can see here, we're playing a Fog of War map in Advanced Wars 2. And uh, as you can see, we're going along capturing things. We get 1,000 points for every... Uh, Thing. And here's COs. As you can see, uh, Sammy's infantry spec, but uh, has some um, okay skills with uh, artillery. And has a little bit of a nerf with uh, vehicles, while Olaf has really no disadvantages. He's rather balanced. Now let's go ahead and compare combat. And as you can see here, I've set up an infantry versus infantry battle. Uh, Sammy's an infantry a spec uh, CO for Orange Star in the Advanced War series. So uh, I figured I would show this off for Conflict. Uh, conflict is more micro management, while uh, Advanced Wars 2 is more macro. Uh, micro meaning small and individual, while macro means big or the whole thing or a lot. So uh, basically, this kind of tells you uh, how the game's set up for. Now, conflict uh, you can have set up to where you can control three units per turn or all of your units per turn. And uh, the combat scene, while fun, uh, can bog the game a bit. Uh, versus Advanced Wars, you just pretty much you can get into it, get going, and a good round or two is like maybe 30 to 45 minutes or so, and you can save your progress mid-war. While this one has no save battery and uh, can last a bit long. Uh, meaning that Advanced Wars has more gameplay replay value versus Conflict, everything is a little more fixed. Granted, this is during the NES time when there wasn't too much option available, so keep that in mind. But uh, basically, the, the combat system here is pretty fun uh, to, once you get used to it, and uh, kind of you can get get your picture on what's going on. Uh, pretty much, 
as you can see, if you see the enemy's backside, that means you're behind, you're behind them. If they see your backside, that means they're behind you. If they're not on the screen, that means that they can't see them. Uh, there's also, you see them, but you're not in range. Uh, if you see side shots, that means you're on the side of them. Uh, and also, and each action can adjust your positions in the battlefield. So, uh, pretty much just gives you a little bit of micromanagement to let you decide how you want to use your units and how they want to set up, and how they want to engage the enemy forces while their commander does the same. And like I said, uh, the battles can get a bit long. Uh, depending upon what units you're using and there is a ceasefire if it gets t too long but, and advanced wars is just kind of you pop in and you go also uh, depending upon what units you engage with what other units you might want to use your uh, anti-tank weaponry versus your infantrymen and whatnot to kill them quicker uh, versus advanced wars, if it's an infantry unit, it, it'll only use a machine gun, uh, saving you a little bit of kind of a hassle of dealing with the s small guys in this version versus the advanced wars version. Uh, pretty much what's going on here is each side is kind of running up, engaging the enemy, and then running away. So, uh, kind of think of it like two teams counting coup against each other, meaning we're just poking each other and then running off. <laughs> and uh, here's a ceasefire. Uh, basically, each battle can last like a good three, four minutes, depending on what's going on or how long you can think and react or luck or whatnot. But generally it's on average three to five minutes. And also some battles, if you know what you're doing, uh, like here, my tank snuck up on the infantry unit and fired a 105 millimeter tank cannon at uh, the same infantry unit we were just engaging when we were on their rear, and we're still on their rear. So we just blew them to bits. Also, keep in mind the uh, fame points for winning and losing battle, uh, giving values to different units. So we'll go back to Advanced Wars. Now, as you can see here, my battle has progressed a bit, and now uh, he uses his seal power. Uh, this also gives uh, different elements of turn-based strategy game of actually involving the weather. All of units get an advantage in winter weather situations, while uh, he gets a disadvantage in rain uh, situations. Also, he can affect the other commander's movement speed by one having it blizzard like this. And uh, if he uses his full power, it can actually damage your units by like a couple points. So, like I said, it, it, even even though your commander values are a little bit different, they're generally the same. So, and here we go. This is uh, showing off how rain affects the combat. I try to get a little bit of footage of what goes and what's going on for each part so you can kind of get a good idea of the different gameplay elements that can be included. Also, when you make a map for Advanced Wars, you can uh, set up your own settings. Like, if you don't want a Fog of War map, you don't have to have a Fog of War map. If you want a random weather map, you can have a random weather map, or a, just a no weather map, or a rain or a winter weather map. It doesn't matter. You can have it by how many cities are captured. You can have it by how much funds you have. You can have it by uh, you have to win by so many turns. Uh, it's all up to you. So uh, this, this gives you a bit more gameplay and creativity. And you can even design maps. Uh, 
which was which is a neat feature. And like I said, Advanced Wars 2 does have a more unique gameplay and uh, replay value compared to Conflict. So, uh, so basically, it's kind of a kind of wings toward Advanced Wars 2 being the dominant of the turn base on this comparison. Just on replay value, but uh, there are some gameplay elements that Conflict does bolster, like the combat system and the uh, capture system is a little bit less of a hassle. Because you, you can have like a unit trying to capture forever at one hit point while you go fight somewhere else. Uh, both games have predictable AI. Uh, both games have uh, AI that you can abuse or you can work around with. And uh, Advanced Wars 2 kind of also has a little bit of a CO power balance issue. Uh, but basically, in com I'll get to that at a later stage. But basically, the objective for most of the time for Advanced Wars is either killing all the units or capturing the HQ. And uh, the same can be said for Conflict, is just you take out the enemy flag tank, marked, which is marked by an H. And uh, it doesn't matter if you kill all the units or not, besides it, you, still, you have to kill it. Uh, meaning that uh, if you can guide your units just good enough, you can win even with a disadvantage. While this one, it's kind of a, if you use your power right, you can come back into the game or it's pretty much dead set against you. So, uh, Pretty much, we will go ahead and just kind of play this out a bit more. Now, also, Advanced War supports uh, different terrain abilities. Conflict, as you saw, love uh, terrain really didn't have much of an effect other than uh, accuracy and spotting, uh, and it actually can hinder you in some battles. Versus here, it's everything is assigned defense points, so. Uh, Pretty much, it's always a bonus to be on like a forest or whatnot. Versus conflict, like I said before, it's not always good to be in a town or being in a forest because it can actually obstruct your view a lot more than it can obstruct theirs, depending on what units and what you're wanting to try to do with it. Uh, But we'll go ahead and skip along here. Uh, here's another change. Uh, conflict has no long range units. Everything in conflict is close to close combat. Uh, however, both sides get a fair chance to retaliate against each other. And here is the superpower uh, that I was talking about earlier. Sam uses Victory March, and she can just pretty much insta capture an HQ. Meaning it's douchey, but it gets the job done. Anyway, this will be Kiki signing out. Uh, and so, see you later.